clear that in not in my backyard problem occurs if they're close to any community. Um, a further response has been received from the Norfolk and Suffolk Gypsy Roman Traveller Service Manager, which in summary states that the service has been aware of the family for a minimum of 2.5 years and has built up a good and trusting relationship with the applicant and his extended family. <coughs> the family have made the town their home with the children attending school. School reports suggest the children are integrating and progressing well. The family have left sites they have stayed on in good order and paid for waste collection and toilet facilities on the tolerated sites. And these um, responses are now on the website in full. So what I'd like to do now is just to go um, around the site, showing you some photographs um, from the boundaries and from the inside. So this is a view up Ruffham Hill towards the east with the site in the treed area that you can see beyond this, this, um, this area here. The buildings of Oakland's Park are visible and the waste recycling facility fence is in the foreground here. So now we're looking back into the opposite direction westward to show the roundabout at the bottom of Ruffin Hill, the Rushbrook Lane Junction and the entrance to the Furs. That's gone in this area here. That's just to show the site in a bit of context. So moving back up Ruffin Hill to show the site frontage from the Oakland's Park. We've got the frontage here, you can just see a post and rail fence in the photograph and access is proposed from the mini roundabout. And also if you've got good eyesight you can just see the footpath sign in this particular area here. So this photograph was taken back in early October and shows the site frontage and the start of the footpath where it runs to the east of the site in this particular area. The site frontage is approximately 25 metres, with the access road is about 20 metres from the Lorry Park boundary, which is over in this corner. And there would be a buffer of five metres between the site edge and the footpath. So the community woodland sign was erected at the entrance of the footpath at the time of the cleanup operation of the, wood, of the woodland and as a deterrent to some antisocial behaviour that was reported. The next two slides are of the footpath which runs down to meet Rushbrook Lane. They illustrate that it has good amenity value and as a result of its green that's a, a result of its green lane character. As I've said before, the proposal is to retain a five metre buffer between the footpath and the site where the more mature planting is in order to retain these mature trees with the highest landscape and amenity value. A close border defence is proposed as a site boundary so the um, buffer strip of the retained planting would be outside the application site. And again, just another view, this was taken more recently um, in the last week to show the footpath. So we're now looking from the footpath towards the A14 across open countryside. Part of this land has been identified for development as part of the South East Berry Strategic Growth Area and this is a point that I'll come back to later on in the presentation. This slide shows the rear boundary of the woodland where it joins the golf driving range. The site boundary for the pitches is set approximately 12 metres in from this point <coughs> to allow the retention of an area without <coughs> planting. So within that area of retained planting, we're now looking south across the golf driving range down to Rushbrook Lane in the distance. The land also falls within the South East Berry Strategic Growth Area under policy BB7 of Berry, the Berry Vision 2031 and I'll deal with this in more detail in a few slides time. So now we've moved um, out onto Rushbrook Lane looking back towards the site in this area. It can be seen beyond the golf driving range here and we're able to pick out some of the more mature trees that are proposed to be retained 
within the scheme. So at this point, we looked at the northern, eastern and southern boundaries of the site and identified the land around the site, including the Lorry Park, to the west is identified for development as a strategic site under policy BB7. The red line on this slide shows the extent of the allocated land, which extends to 74.9 hectares. And the photograph that we looked at from the footpath shows views across this area. And then the last one that we looked at from the golf, over the golf driving range is looking in this direction. So I'll return to this slide before the end of the presentation to touch on the policy issues addressed in the report. So now we've moved on to look at the western boundary of the site, and this is a view from the Lorry Park. And this would be the western boundary of the application site. You'll see that there's a significant change in levels of the Lorry, Lorry Park lying at a lower level than the application site. So this slide shows the extent of planting that you can see within the Lorry Park. We've got the fence. You can just see the fence line running in this area. Um, the proposal is to provide an acoustic fence along this boundary with the retention and management of trees along the boundary within the site as well. So now we've moved into the site looking out towards the Lorry Park which again shows the extent of the, the buffer that's provided um, between the site and the Lorry Park and the drop in levels down to the Lorry Park itself. So at this point, I'd just like to show a slide of the commemorative stone that lies within the site in the northeastern corner. It states that the oak grove was planted by West Suffolk County Council for the enjoyment of future generations and in tribute to the Suffolk countryside. It's been the subject of many comments which suggest that the land should not be developed as it belongs to the community and as such is not available. Just as a point of clarification, matters of land ownership um, cannot be considered as material in the consideration and determination of planning applications. But in order to clarify the situation, whilst the County Council have not provided any written comments on this subject, inquiries have revealed that the land was acquired in 1960 by the County Council and there are no specific conditions, restrictions or positive covenants regarding the use of the land which would prevent its sale. The applicant's agent has indicated that the stone could be retained or relocated to the landscaped area beside the footpath um, as a condition of planning permission was granted. The next slides show the trees which will need to be removed in order for the development to go ahead. The boundary to the Lorry Park can be seen where the post and rail fence is. And you will see that there are trees in this area which could be thinned out and managed more effectively to provide an effective screen. <clears throat> the linear pattern of trees um, shows a very little understory planting due um, to the unmanaged nature of the woodland at the present time. The woodland is considered to be of moderate ecological and landscape value, with the proposal being to remove the plantation oaks while leaving the boundary trees in order to minimise any impact. It's been calculated that the overall loss of trees in percentage terms equates to a loss of 50%, but this area is not just based purely on the application site, but takes into account the retained areas of woodland beyond the application and its boundaries. And just to illustrate, the mature trees alongside the footpath would be outside the application site and would be retained. So the report identifies three main issues in relation to the consideration of the application and the slides we've just looked at have shown the trees and the landscape issues. The second matter is one of need. The matter of presenting need, um, that is that the family within the district without a site to live on, as opposed to the theoretical need identified through the modelling as a guiding policy document, and this is covered fully in the report. Policy issues are another significant consideration, and policy BB7 is identified um, as shown um, by the red area um, on this slide is the 
identified as a strategic site for future development, and the application site is clearly within it, as you can see here. <coughs> the policy is clear in stating that applications for planning permission will only be determined once the master plan for the whole site has been adopted by the local planning authority, and furthermore, the master plan should be prepared in accordance with the content of an adopted concept statement unless a material change in circumstances indicate otherwise. And this is part of the plan which forms part of well, this is the plan which forms part of the concept statement showing the site lying across part of the landscape corridor and lower and higher density housing in this particular area. The concept statement requires the developer to explore opportunities for gypsy and traveller accommodation within the master plan should a need be identified at the time of development. So as a result, we have an identified policy tension here in terms of whether the development of the site could be seen as premature under policy BB7, or if the need and policies of the core strategy CS6 um, take precedence and this is coupled with material considerations in terms of landscape impact and the need. So a full consultation process was undertaken and the responses are summarised in the agenda papers on page 17 to 27. This slide shows the extent of neighbour consultations carried out and the light blue squares show the properties consulted. So we've got the properties here on Rushbrook Lane and the red triangles indicate where the responses, um, the responses have come from, which are reported in the report. So you see the main concentration of responses are in these particular areas, and some further down the lane. Also, there were some from further afield, which are shown on this slide. So, to sum up, planning law requires applications to be determined, determined in accordance with the development plan unless material considerations indicate otherwise. In the consideration of this application, significant weight has been attached to the urgent need the family has for a site and the limited impact the site is likely to have in landscape terms. As part of the assessment, the matter of prematurity and the prospect of whether the determination of the application in accordance with the recommendation of approval, would be likely to fetter the delivery of the master plans carefully considered and concluded that it would be unlikely to do so. So the application is recommended for approval with conditions set out on pages, page 41 of the agenda papers. Thank you. <coughs> right, we have... One, two, three, four, five public speakers. <coughs> Over in the rooms. Here, Brand of Pew. Father Mark Hackerson. Councillor Goodfind. <coughs> County Council, no, Borough Councillor Sarah Slump. Yes, she's there, as the board member. And Michael Hargreaves, who is the agent. stressing that our objections to this proposal would apply to any application for this site. A cardinal material consideration for each strategic site under Vision 2031 is that planning applications will only be determined once the master plan for a whole site has been adopted by the Council. If our Council is not steadfast in upholding this principle, then the whole authority of Vision 2031, itself adopted less than six months ago, is put at risk. No master plan for this 1,250 housing site has been agreed. The proposal involves the handover of the community woodland belt. We believe that it is with respect not yours to give to any private individuals. It is the people's to hold. In any case, such action would contravene our council's expectation that mature trees and woodland belts be retained. To allow the replacement of the community wood by any building, and without any offsetting, would again severely prejudice Vision 2031 and would be seen as immoral by many of the 200 plus signatories of this latest petition. 
Officers are ignoring all other material considerations by using one consideration, the actual need of the applicants for accommodation. This so-called material consideration is a matter of opinion, not fact. The desire to have accommodation for 26 people on one site is not a need, it is an aspiration, a possible lifestyle choice from applicants who are not homeless. The officers fail to explain and define actual need in this case, despite the government inspector in his Vision 2031 report indicating that there are sufficient actual travellers' pitches in the borough to satisfy demand for the next five years. Above all, this so-called material consideration has to be discounted, for as paragraph three of your guidance notes and decisions points out, the identity and notice of the applicant are not a material consideration. The government's present planning policy for traveller sites calls for fair and equitable treatment for travellers. We agree with this and expect that the applicant is treated in the same way as the owner of the Furs Residential Park, also on the South East Berry site, who has been correctly advised that his application to extend cannot be considered until the master plan for the whole area has been adopted. It must also be noted that the government is currently preparing new policies whereby travellers who settle will be subject to the same planning rules as everyone else. To allow this application to override the extensive weight of the material considerations contained in Vision 2031, core strategy and supporting policies, and as importantly, the direction of travel of central government in relation to traveling sites, would totally undermine the public's confidence in our council's planning decisions. We ask you to refuse this application. both as the Delaney's Parish Priest, but more importantly as a fellow resident of the town. And I must say, a resident of much less standing than the Delaney's. I've been here for five months, they've been here for four years. So they're already members of our community. Travellers, the traditional life of travellers involves st stopping at the side of the road. That times are changing, as we all know, and that way of life is becoming increasingly difficult and if not impossible. This has been recognized by the Delaney's themselves and one of the things that Kevin is very concerned about is giving his children and future generations choice. A choice that is only really available to them if they have set a settled enough situation to have education for their children. So if the children are like if their children, like all our children, are to have a choice in the future and freedom, then they need education. That means that we need to support them in that desire for their children. Um, however, the change has to be gradual, and I know, I'm aware that the government is considering changing its policy, but it is not possible, humanly speaking, for a way of life to be changed suddenly and overnight. It has to be a gradual process. And I would emphasize that the, few, for the, the, few, the plans that are before you are plans that are envisaged to be put in place at the expense of the Delaney's, um, which has not always been clear in the debate in the newspaper and the local media. I must admit that I have been impressed both by the Delaney's and by the council officers working under the authority of the councillors here in the in their efforts and their willingness to actually work together to provide a real solution to a, an actual, real problem of homelessness. You may live in a caravan, but if there is nowhere to put that caravan, then you are homeless. And if there is nowhere legal to put that caravan, then you are also forced into the position where you are going to act illegally by occupying land without permission. And I'm sure none of us would want to put someone in the position where they act illegally or are forced to act illegally. Unlike some travellers, the Delaney's and their extended family have not acted like purchasing sites, moving on, and then applying for retroactive planning permission. They have actually worked with the council officers, and in fact it was the council officers themselves who identified the possible site on Ruffham Hill, which is also an important consideration, I think, 
because it's on the light, in the light of that recommendation that the planning, um, the plans that are before you have been put together at some considerable expense. Could you warn me, please? Yes. Okay. Um, I would actually say that the area in question is an area that is not well maintained. It is not very much available for public use. I have been down there a month ago to see a fallen tree 20 yards down across the path, blocking the path completely. That tree is, was still there yesterday. That Thank is you, Thank you very much. Councillor Hyde. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we, we at the uh, Town Council um, reconsidered this at the meeting on the 17th of December and upheld our first decisions. Therefore, the decisions of the Town Council uh, and its objections are as follows. We object on the grounds of loss of trees, two, nature conservation, three, it is contrary to replacements in Edmundsbury Local Plan 2016 Policy NE3, Protection of the Landscape, which states that development will be permitted only where it does not have an adverse impact on features of landscape and amenity value. And four, contrary to Vision 2031, South East Barry Concept Statement, Paragraph 1.27, relating to the retention of trees. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stan. Thank you, Chairman. Um, over the past six months since the consultation, I have had many, many, many letters, emails, phone calls, as you would expect from concerned residents, right across my division uh, and our ward. Um, some of these concerns are not related to material planning considerations, which is what we're here to discuss today. This is a development control committee. Um, and so as such, I've disregarded them. But two of them are entirely relevant, and it's those which I wish to bring to your attention today on behalf of my electors. My first point is that we are in principle against any sort of development on this community woodland site, which was planted, as we've heard, by West Suffolk County Council to commemorate the Queen's Silver Jubilee and was designated very clearly for local people to enjoy. Indeed, even the memorial stone on the site states that this is for future generations to enjoy. I believe that we have a moral duty to uphold this and not build on it as has been suggested. Contrary to the report in front of you and what you've heard, this woodland is used daily by local residents and those from further afield who choose to walk their dogs and enjoy the woodland area. And I firmly believe all the established trees should be fully protected, <coughs> as intended, and the woodland should not be developed. The reason that I can say with some um, force that I know the area is well used is because of the level of complaints that I've had as a local councillor about the social behaviour issues up there and the number of local residents who came forward willingly to help us work to clean up the area and deal with the issues. I believe developing this site and destroying the woodland would be contrary to the County Council's aspirations for woodlands as outlined in page 19 of its nature strategy. The Forestry Commission would also remind us there is a presumption against the conversion of forest land to other uses unless there are compelling reasons in the public interest to do so. I don't see that this is a compelling reason. My second and perhaps most substantive point is to remind you that last year we voted as a council to formally adopt Vision 2031. Policy BB7 of Vision 2031 relates to the area of the potential development of the southeast of Ferris and Edmonds, the area which abuts the site of Robert. Colleagues, a master plan has not yet been developed and adopted for the strategic site, and Vision 2031 clearly states that applications for planning permission will only be determined once the master plan for the whole site has been adopted by the local planning authority, that's us. You've heard this from the planning officers this morning themselves. It's a material fact. Until this master plan has been formally adopted, I fail to see how this planning application can even be considered. Furthermore, electors of mine from a nearby Fertile residential park have their expansion plans turned down on exactly these grounds because the master plan wasn't adopted. Why one will then and another one now just a few months later? Vision 2031 is our own policy. If we seek to go against this, this soon after its adoption, by prematurely granting planning applications without a satisfactory master plan in place, which has gone through the appropriate democratic channels, and how on earth do we expect others to respect the validity of our very own vision? And how do we expect us ourselves to retain credibility as a planning authority? I am quite simply against us bending the rules just because it suits us in this particular case. 
I wish to make it clear that my objection would stand for any proposed development on this site, not just this one. However, I am absolutely clear in my own mind that this application is both premature, given that the master plan is still under development, and inappropriate given the designation of specific history of the wooded area, and I urge you to refuse it on those grounds. Good morning. Thank you for allowing me to speak. We are here to decide today whether to grant the Delaney's a home. Unlike the rest of us, they do not have a safe, secure place to live. Living by the side of the road with your family continuously moved on is stressful in ways the rest of us cannot imagine. Children will never be able to get on if they cannot go to school regularly. Being homeless is not their fault. It is because nationally there is a chronic shortage of accommodation for travellers, but for over 20 years, councils across the country have ignored the requirements of successive governments to approve enough sites. Refusals are often not for good reasons, but because of lobbying, often by people not living close enough to a site to be genuinely affected. If you attempted to listen to the petitions and refuse, we would ask you to consider whether it is for proper planning reasons or other issues, reasons you would not entertain in refusing development for Indian or Jewish people. This is a good site. It is near the town with all its facilities, but a little away from existing housing. Housing. It is in the part of Barry where Vision 2031 says provision for travellers should be made. It was so, crucially, it was suggested to the Delaney's by the council officers. So they paid for the application and all the expensive survey work in good faith, believing it should be approved. The reasons for refusal are thin. The main objections are the loss of woodland because the local plan says a massive plan is needed for South East Barry first considering them in turn. We will retain all the important trees along and, and by side of the, the, of, of the public footpath. The rest are spindly, too close Lovely. together, and of, no, of a minimal <coughs> habitat value. The site attracts antisocial behaviour, and the South East Ferry development will have to include substantial, good quality new woodlands. The council's plan claims to make enough provision for travellers, but, but if any need arises, it should be accommodated in South East Ferry. The, the needs assessment was wrong. Nobody challenged it at the examination. It is based on projections, not evidence. Travellers were not involved. But the Delaney's are homeless is clear evidence of need now. <coughs> Refusing the application because the master plan is not ready risks a waste of effort because a site is needed and by the time we get to an appeal, the master plan will have to define where it should be. The application site may well be the best location. We hope you will do the right thing today, approve this application and provide a decent home for the Delaney's as part of this community. But if not, better to, up, please. Yeah, I am, sir. But, but if not, better to grant a temporary permission while the master plan confirms where the site is within the South East Ferry area, rather than refuse with the costs and risks of an appeal. Thank you. Thank you. Right, now we're with the members. Councillor Russian, you will first. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not questioning the need for a site. I am questioning the location of it. Um, yes, a potential site is designated in the BV7 policy document, but details are not finalised in relation to where the site should be. The master plan for this area is not yet adopted, but will be brought forward in the next few months. Therefore, to de determine this application at this stage seems premature and piecemeal. I therefore propose that we defer this application until the master plan comes forward and has been adopted. We can then look at the whole growth area and put a site for travellers in the context of the master plan. So I propose deferment. Thank you, Councillor Russian is unseconded. Councillor Warner? 
Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to second that. Um, I must say that the presentation we've had today is, is probably the best presentation we, we've had, and I thank the, the officers for, for the many photographs which have made quite clear what the situation is like up there. And for the speakers, um, I think the best selection of public speech, the speeches we've had on the, on the building application here. <coughs> so I can't think that anybody can say that it's not been properly considered because it has. But I, I do support the view that we can't start giving plan permission piecemeal. There has to be a master plan and we have to wait for that. So I support the deferment. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're now talking on the deferment. Councillor Nettleton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I'd like to declare a local non pecuniary interest and a member of Suffolk County Council. Um, I'm not quite sure that I think the idea of deferment is a good one. Um, it, it puts off the, the decision which we could make today, and which I think we should. Now, there, of course, are many objectors to this application, and they have raised several important issues, and I've just picked out three uh, two of them uh, Councillor Stout referred to earlier. First of all is the site itself, the woodland area. Um, the woodland area is uh, designated 40 years ago um, and it's right next to Rory Park. It's been there 40 years and is largely neglected. Um, I don't think it's been well used. I've never looked at it before. The site is class Thursday, but I was very, not impressed by it. Um, the argument goes that it was left in perpetuity, um, and I don't think we could take that argument because if you say it's left in perpetuity and it's not a successful site, then in 40 years' time it will still be there and still a neglected area. So I don't accept the argument that the that the future should imprison us. Uh, the future should be imprisoned by the past. I don't accept that argument at all. So I think we should look at this site in terms of its value uh, as, a, as, a, as a site for the Delaney family. So it has little amenity value and is a disposable asset. The second is the, the master plan and the failure to deliver the master plan yet, and that's why the deferment is being put forward. Um, the issue with that, of course, I wonder if the officer could put up the, the map which shows the flashing blue light um, with the sign. That's the one, yeah. I mean, if you look at that, and there would be possibility of a, uh, a traveller site there, on that day, right? that's probably about the place you would put it because it's right on the edge of the area. So I would say that um, it, it, I don't think it depends on the massive plan. The reference was made uh, by Amy Williams to the, the Furs. The Furs is in a more central position within the site and therefore it would be understandable to have that um, have that deferred until the master plan is there. So I don't see the connection between the two. They're two separate applications. <coughs> And finally, could I just come to the, the issue of the, uh, the need or the perceived need, which uh, uh, people have used about in the, uh, the Catholic priest spoke eloquently on that. Uh, there's talk in the correspondence about the settled community. Well, the, the Lady family wish to become part of the settled community, and at the moment, they're in the community, but not settled. Uh, they have children in school, and I, I believe some of them are here today to listen to this. And I'm quite keen on these children getting a good education, as all of the children should. So I think it would be beneficial to them if this um, application was adopted by the council and approved. Um, just my personal history, and when I used my father's work and my little brother's um, hospital illnesses, I went to five primary schools in six years, between the ages of five and eleven, and I didn't think that was very advantageous. I don't want the children to be disadvantaged here. Um, reference was made in the letters to the, the current temporary site, which is on a floodplain uh, down on the Compagnon Way, down by the River Lark. Um, I, that isn't a suitable site because it's, it's floodplain, it's really low line, it's next to a, a main road, Compagnon Way coming into the town with a Seal access, so I feel as though that isn't a good site for them either. This seems like the possible best possible site. It's better than a, uh, a woodland area, as the uh, agent pointed out. Uh, most of the trees will be retained, 
So I think there's an advantage in approving this application. Obviously, you've got a, a proposal for you for uh, a deferment, uh, but if that uh, fails, then I would like to propose approval of the application with the 20 conditions plus condition 21, which will be the retention of the staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Stevens. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the motion for deferment rather puts the weighting of the decision on a sustainable development plan as it brings forward the master plan. And I would say that that is the wrong forum for this crucial decision to be made. And I would not like to have the overall consideration of the master plan to be so weighted with this one decision. So I am not in favour of deferment. Um, and I've listened carefully to the objectors uh, and those supporters. And mention has been made by the officers um, about the, the local settled needs of the family within the various settlements area. Well, I'm sure we all are uh, wanting to integrate various ethnic diverse groups within our community into a harmonious settlement where they can seamlessly live and work and be educated um, in our community around various neighbors. I can't reconcile that you need a settled community with amenity blocks and access to hospitals and schools with the need to insist through your rights to live in caravans. Because I'm sure the sustainable standards of living within a caravan, although they can be modern and very high, are not as high as the requirements that we have for modern housing within the market. We already have a policy which will be integrated into this master planning process of local affordable needs, which could well accommodate and be integrated in the master planning process for this family, should they choose to live in this particular area. In fact, the other areas of development in various elements will also have such policies. So that I'm nervous about moving the decision-making process to the master planning process, because we have a policy here in this borough uh, to grant or refuse today um, this particular application. Much has been made about the community woodland aspect, and I was fortunate to go on the site visit. My view is that <coughs> it is more of an industrial planting in rows um, that need felling judiciously so that mature trees can develop within the site to improve that established woodland belt, which I think has more amenity value than uh, using it as a gypsy trance. So uh, those are my thoughts. Uh, there's a lot of voting to do before we get to uh, other substantive motions, but uh, mm. Chairman, I need to the rest of the Thank you, Chairman. I wonder if the officers could um, speak on the principle of deferment, please, and where that leaves us um, with the danger of non determination. Otherwise, on this particular side, both arguments that I've heard today are absolutely valid, and in many ways, the site is um, extremely suitable, in my particular opinion. However, I do take the argument that we have not yet adopted the master plan as being um, a superior argument, possibly, in this um, particular um, determination. So I wish to know about the danger of um, deferment regarding non-determination. When it comes to the actual layout of the site, when I look at the other applications before us today, the big one that stands out very often when we're discussing um, applications at this meeting is around parking. Now, there is no application today before us 
that provides three parking spaces for residential developments in this way. And I do think there has to be some meeting of the different communities. There has to be some acceptance that if a community, if, if a particular um, diverse part of the population wishes to become part of this, the settled community, then they do have to slightly adopt the settled community's way of life. And when we are looking at new developments now, parking is absolutely crucial to those developments. And parking standards are very much to the forefront of people's um, decision-making process. So I do question the actual layout of the site, the very, well, the, the quite generous plot sizes, and this provision for parking, the three parking spaces. There is no green travel plan for this. A lot of our uh, developments require green travel plans, and certainly three parking standard spaces are not a requirement for a lot of our developments. In fact, we're lucky if we get one. I think we're looking at a development later on in these papers, 11 residential units and um, something like eight parking spaces. So, you know, I, I, I question the way out of this plan and um, this generous provision for parking in this day and age. So please, if I could have an answer on the parking standards and also an answer on um, no determination. Thank you. Thank you. We'll come back down in a moment to uh, two more in a moment. Uh, three catch up you. Um, well, this is another question, one I'm afraid. Um, um, speaking on the deferral, though, uh, it, it seems to me there are uh, two material concerns that we need more information on here, um, and that's the first point, um, and the 2031 point, the most important point. I would like uh, further officer um, guidance and the balance of those. Um, I'm, I'm not inclined to support deferral at the moment, but I would like to uh, comment on those, please. Thank you. Councillor Ray. Thank you, Chairman. Um, well, I take and agree with the point that uh, Councillor Stevens has made in relation to the putting pressure on the Sustainable Development Panel in consideration of the master plan, uh, if we uh, agree, uh, were to agree deferral today. Um, and I shall not be supporting the motion for deferral. I think we need to, to grasp this nettle and make a decision today. I think we've got enough information to do that. Uh, we've got, had a very comprehensive report in front of us. We've had a very comprehensive and balanced briefing from the officers. And we've heard what objectors and supporters have said. I think we also want to look at it in the wider context, which has been referred to by the speakers. But um, the Delaney's have been in this area for some considerable time. They've not had a permanent site. Um, they've been, uh, as, as I'm sure everyone here would be aware of, they've been moved around from site to site, and there have been uh, evictions, injunctions, um, and the borough council was not involved in this, obviously. Um, and the solution to the problem is finding a permanent site. And the borough council has gone to great efforts to find a suitable site. Uh, and this is the site that um, our officers have come up with. Um, I, I remind you that we've, that the council has gone out, you know, borough wide looking for sites, asking parish councils uh, for suitable sites in their areas uh, on at least two occasions um, with no response. No suggestions. So the borough council has had to take the initiative and go out and look for sites. And this is the site that they've come up with. And I think it's a, uh, a reasonable site. No one has, despite considerable efforts, no one has come up with an alternative suggestion. Uh, so I think uh, we need to grip uh, this issue and make a decision today. So I shall not be supporting deferral. Thank you, Councillor Ray. Councillor French. Thank you, Chairman. I just want some clarification. I thought the idea 
of being a traveller is that you travel. Um, that it seems to me that the, I mean, I mean, I'm supportive of them, but they came from the um, residence somewhere. So I'm just wondering what happens to the caravan, because the caravans of the, uh, you know, of travellers are not small by any means. I'm just wondering when they, when and if, if and when these houses get built, where the caravan might be put.
working hard, paying their taxes, um, and uh, uh, becoming part of this community over the last four years. The reason they're here is because they work very hard, um, offering a service that the local people here take advantage of. They're not here as pariahs and benefit cheats, they're actually earning their own living. And I think it's incumbent upon us as a council to make sure if this is their place of choice that they want to stay, then we should, as the government has suggested, give them that opportunity. And so wherever we suggest they stay, there will not be um, people that are particularly happy, but we have to make that decision, a difficult decision. And so um, I'm afraid, Mr Chairman, I would like to, um, if the deferments um, declared null and void and then get the support for it, um, um, suggest that this application should in fact be approved. Thank you. Okay, I have a list. I'll start with the um, parking and the site layout first. I think um, in terms of where the caravans would go, there it's actually indicated on the layout plan for a mobile home and two tours on each pitch. So any approval would be in accordance with the submitted plans. Therefore, the layout would be informed as part of the approval. From a parking point of view, um, we look at the planning application and the way it's submitted and the needs of the, of the applicants. Therefore, um, you know, the County Council, higher authority, have, have not raised any, um, any, any issues in that respect. Here we go again. I think there's a battery problem with this actually. It flashed. So, but I'll carry on answering the questions and perhaps can we see if we can get somebody in to look at it. Um, so I can't say really any more on the parking issues. I think it's, it's an application in front of us and we have to look at it um, in respect of what's been submitted. In terms of non-determination, um, the applicants are currently um, living on a site with a toleration agreement that allows them to stay there for the entire duration of the planning process under this application reference. So um, they, would, they would be able to um, stay there until every avenue had been exhausted in terms of appeal or whilst other, um, other issues are looked at during the period of deferral. So I can't say it's not a possibility, but it's unlikely given the terms of the toleration agreement. Um, in terms of the um, furs and prematurity, there is um, in the policy response um, some information on that. Um, we are looking at a different set of policies that do deal with planning policies for travellers, which um, is a separate document which runs alongside the NPPF. Well, we do have to look at need in this particular case. Therefore, the need is a material consideration. And the presenting need, the fact that the family are here, has to be taken into consideration. Therefore, that's why it's different to the FERS application, which was for um, market housing. Um, in terms of the master plan, um, my colleague, one of the major projects team, Gareth, may have some more information on the timetable of the master plan. Uh, thank you, Chairman. <coughs> the master plan process is being led by the developers, so it's not something that the council is in control of. So that's the first point to make, really. Uh, so the timetable is the developer's gift. Um, all have over having said that, the latest update from them is that they're likely to submit a draft master plan to us um, before the summer this year. Um, consult on that plan and then we can take it through the uh, internal committee process with a view to adopting it later on this year. But um, again, you know, until we've actually received a master plan, we haven't even seen a draft yet, we can't really firm up on what the deadlines and, and the programme will actually be. Non-determination, parking, prematurity, site layout, 
and the fact that there are um, <coughs> separate sort of policies and planning policies for travel sites that we do have to take into consideration in the determination of this application. So I don't think there's anything else to add. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, I'm, I'm still a little bit confused about the non-determination. I didn't quite, wasn't quite clear. <laughs> but uh, if um, should it go to appeal, should should um, you know that that be what happens? How long do we have before there's a date of non-determination before that appeal is held? The, um, an appeal for non-determination could come in at any time because we're past the expiry date of the application. So it is within you know, the applicant's um, gift to do that at the moment. However, given that we have been um, working with the applicants in other areas, other departments of the authority to provide a tolerated site, the terms of the toleration agreement are such that it allows them to stay on that site until an appeal has been exhausted and I think it's one calendar month after any sort of planning process until this planning process has been exhausted. Okay? Thank you, Chair. Yes, I quite understand that. I understand about the toleration agreement. But that wouldn't stop an appeal for non-determination. Should the no, so wish. No, no I wouldn't. So, the, but the appeal process would be followed, and then at the end of the appeal process, um, you know, that then there would be one calendar month after the decision when the toleration agreement would end. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to point out to the planning officer that it's easy enough to get them in. It's very much more difficult to get them out. Uh, and the other point I would like to say is what we haven't been told the acreage on this site. I would get in the government's guidelines is eight houses or ten houses to the acre. Why are these people different to everybody else? I'd also like to point out that if it's been suggested about this woodland, it is unique in its oak. We have ash at home. A hundred percent of the ash trees are now affected. The, the, the disastrous effect of ash disease is going to be felt in the next few years. Some of us can remember the ghastly place that the gypsies left behind, not two miles from where the site is, or probably less. And the left comes in such a terrible state. That will I intend to vote against. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, One last point. I think I would request the officers to look for another site, preferably then next door to the police station, in which case the police inspectors won't use it. Thank you. Can I just remind the members of the sensitivity and the duty that the council has to treat all, all persons equal under the Equality Act? So please bear that in mind and make the comments. Uh, I'd like to publicly distance myself from those last remarks, please. Thank you. Council Marks. Thank you, Chairman. I, I still do not understand why we have a, um, a, a vision plan, a, a master plan yet to be adopted. How we can have people come into this area, where, which is governed by this vision, and, and, and do as they please. I, I, I just don't see it right at all. I think you have to succumb to the, the normal planning process which exists in this area. Thank you. Right. We have a proposal for deferral. Um, everybody happy with that? Right. We will have a vote on deferral until we've got master plan is in place and work from there. Those in favour of deferral, please show.
there were two in favour and eleven against, and that's defeated. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to move uh, approval of the application. I note that the agent uh, made reference to a temporary approval, uh, which may be a possibility here to be considered, so that, uh, as Gareth has pointed out about the going forward with the master plan, this could be in included within that. They have a temporary approval, uh, but probably different ground. I guess I don't agree with what, uh, what I had to say. We did make the point <coughs> make people on a permanent site there forever, um, but if you grant a temporary consent, then that can be considered as part of the master plan. So that might be the best way forward, if I can get a second for that. Again, I go back to, uh, that would include the 20 conditions on case uh, 41, and I would add a condition uh, about the retention of the stone, and the stone itself, the state is in, is an indication of the neglect of the site over a number of years, and whilst I think that so the county council should have maintained it. I think it is probably a failed site, a good intention in the first place, uh, but it's a failed site, so I would like to move approval. I just have one thing to ask you, Mr. Chairman, is that if the application is refused, could some consideration be given by the council to lobbying the county council for the uh, existing site, the temporary site on Compignon Way, to have a concealed entrance line, slow concealed entrance line for vehicles coming in off the A14 to get into the town centre. I've asked West Area Highways for it and they told me no, but I hope we could get that because I think that's a safety issue. But I would like to move approval and I uh, hope we can get uh, some support for the Delaney family, for the children, because I think the need is the key issue in this application. Thank you. You're not moving approval on a temporary basis, are you? No. I'm moving on a, on a permanent basis, but if, if people are unhappy with the permanent nature, then they might put an amendment for a temporary, but I've moved permanently. Okay, is that second? Councillor Whittaker. You wish to speak at this stage? No? Councillor Russian. Thank you. I'm just a little bit wary of the idea of a temporary application. Um, I think we have to either decide to approve or to refuse in this meeting on a permanent basis because if a temporary approval is granted, um, people move in and obviously the trees will be destroyed. Um, therefore, the, the thought of trying to, pre to preserve the trees is somewhat um, put out the window. At the moment we are talking about permanent position, permit, permission. Yes, Chair, we've got a clarification on paragraph 99, please, on page 40. It has been suggested in response from contributors and objectors that they're effectively asking why it might be a major personal um, permission if granted. And the response is the government say they don't like that. So effectively, by granting permission, in the long term, you're turning this into a transit sometime. Look, the, the whole found, that's what it says here, the whole foundation of this application has been on the need of a particular family, which we all, I'm sure, will appreciate. But um, when that family's needs are met, they decide to leave or, or, or vacate the site, it, that, it then remains open. That makes it a transit site, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, Chairman, very much. Uh, I was just wanted to take issue with the point that this is not a fair site, it is simply neglected. And um, given proper management and a reasonable amount of work, it could be restored into the condition that it was originally intended. And so I certainly don't regard it as fair. Um, I take a point about uh, oak trees. Um, they are, in this community, a valuable asset and should be willfully destroyed, but they do need to be managed properly. This hasn't been managed, and that's why I think it's a mistake that it is at the moment. But were it properly managed, it would be a very use, useful um, community and, and value and uh, very good program as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stevens. Um, Chairman, could I have some clarification on the recommendations of page 41? Should the committee vote against those recommendations by the officers, what will the status be 
of that decision. Um, Chairman, just to clarify, are you um, asking what would be the position in relation to our Monday 2 protocol? Um, well, in terms of if members were looking or minded to refuse this application, obviously we would need to understand properly what those concerns are. From what members have said so far, it relates to not being convinced that this site wouldn't prejudice the master plan for, for South East Ferry. Um, and also concerns raised about um, the loss of trees and the landscape impact of, of that loss. If members were looking to refuse the application on those grounds, um, it would be possible for members to do that today without invoking the Minder 2 process. Thank you, Councillor Thank you. Um, I've been happy to clarify clarification earlier, uh, and the paragraphs uh, in the report have seemed very clear to me. Um, um, people seem to be missing the point that this is not a normal planning application. This is an application under the special circumstances that were asked to apply to the Gypsy and Traveller Group. This is, this is national law. Um, so all the points um, from paragraph 54 onwards um, seem to apply to me. Um, it alters absolutely everything, um, whatever everybody may want to think about that privately. Um, so I think we have a uh, a very important duty to perform here to comply with um, the, the, the laws of this country. Um, and uh, I can't find any material planning considerations here that um, prevent us um, uh, approving this uh, application. Um, so we would be uh, failing in our duties if we. Uh, didn't follow the uh, recommendations of our officers. Thank you. Councillor Ray. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, there's been mention of, of, of um, if you like, a temporary permission. And one of the, one of the issues that, that we've seen in, in, that officers have raised and, and others have raised is the effect of granting this planning permission on the master plan. Uh, and of course, as I understand it, Vision 2031 requires the developer to put a gypsy and traveller site in the southeast um, uh, very strategic development. Um, and, and we've seen that area up on, on our, our slides. And somewhere in that area, the developer in the master plan, given the uh, clearly uh, evident need in this case, has to find a location for a gypsy and travel site. <coughs> now, I accept that uh, this particular site may not be the ideal site that the developer might come up with in that whole area. So, um, I think the maybe some merit in, in granting uh, a temporary approval until the developer has 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 well, had time to consider where in that site he he would put in that whole area he would put the gypsy travel site um, and um, if you like the, the it, Granting permission on a temporary basis would solve the immediate problem for the Delaney family uh, for perhaps the next five years. Uh, and then if the developer came up with overriding reasons to move that site elsewhere um, within that whole area, uh, then that could be um, agreed at that time. So I think there is some merit in, in, in a, a, a some sort of temporary approval. Thank you. Well, we think for a temporary approval is once you cut the trees down for the temporary approval, you've got another four years before that back to where I know. Councillor Roth. Uh, thank you, Chairman, for just critiquing what I was saying. Um, you can't take trees down on a temporary basis. 
and said, hand it down. And that's that. You're not going to build uh, the um, facilities there and down the roads on a temporary basis. Um, so the whole idea of, of being temporary is, is, I have to say, a bit, a bit farcical. Um, we've, we've, got to, we've got to decide. Um, it's been decided already not to defer it, so we now have to make a decision. And I think we need to get on with it. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Pew. Well, Councillor Oliver has said some of what I would say. I mean, you, you can't uh, let someone build a house and then let somebody else uh, uh, move it five years later. It, it's absolutely ludicrous. We wouldn't uh, apply the same uh, rules to, uh, to a proper house. So that this is a private uh, application. That's the other point that we need to take into account. This is not a, a publicly decided uh, um, site provision. This is private. Thank you. Right. We have proposed and seconded for approval, not on a temporary basis. Uh, so those in favour, please. Sorry, Chair, and that, just to clarify that it's a vote for approval with the additional condition recommended by Councillor Nettleton for the stone. Thank you. Happy with that, Councillor Nettleton? Councillor Whittaker? Yes. Right, those in favour of approval, please show.
motion seconded for refusal of the motion filed with the police to show. And those against? So that application is refused. 